In this lesson, we'll create a pocket operation in the side of a part. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a multi-axis position 2D contour toolpath and create a toolpath pattern. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example and let's carry on creating some multi-axis positioning contours. We've already taken care of the outside of this section and we could replicate that process on the other side and then we could go around and make a pattern of it. And then we also need to take care of this pocket here as well as the one from the top. So let's get started first by taking this contour, duplicating it, and then modifying its parameters. So under edit, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna change the orientation. So from here, I'm gonna reselect my Z axis face. Make sure that we grab the inside face because that will help us pick the direction and orientation. Then we need to flip the Z and then we need to reselect our contour chain. So notice in this case, the arrow is starting at the top and moving its way around. So let's go ahead and say, okay. And notice that it says the top must be above the bottom. So what happens is my selection process for all the planes, some of them were based on selecting geometry. So the top position needs to be reselected as well as the bottom height. Bottom height needs to be rotated around and reselected. And then we can say, okay. So now we've created this new operation. And if we simply run through it, I'm gonna temporarily hide the stock and just play through and make sure that it is moving around in the same manner as it was on the other side. Now, of course, we have a lot of collisions and the reason is simply because we haven't gone through and simulated the other operations before it. But now we have contours on both sides in this orientation. We can select them, create new pattern, and we can do a mirror pattern to the other side. For the mirror plane, we wanna go in, in this case, we wanna use the XY plane, and then we're gonna say, okay. So now we've got pattern one for our drilling operation, pattern two for the counter bore in each of those mounts, and then pattern three to go around the outside. We could have also gone through the process of creating the tool pass for each of these and then patterning them all together and still using that organized by tool or organized by operation if we wanted to. But there are various reasons why you would wanna do one over the other to simplify tool changes, to maybe work through the process of figuring out how you're going to manufacture the part. But in the end, as long as you are organizing them for the most efficient manufacturing possible, then you shouldn't have to worry as much about which ones get included in the pattern. Because ultimately, if you put them all in the pattern, it would still reorganize it by tool. And at this point, we've done two tools for the drilling operation. We used our 3 8 end mill for this, and then we went down to a quarter for this. So at this point, what we've done is we've taken care of the top, drilling and tapping these four holes. We've taken care of all four of these sides. We need to take care of these side pockets, and then we need to come back and machine this upper pocket. So we're gonna carry on using that quarter inch tool because that's the one that's currently loaded in the part. We're gonna create another operation. Now in this case, I'm gonna to try to use 3D adaptive clearing, and I'm gonna select the bottom of this edge. And notice that again, it's sort of pushing it down to a flat line, and it's because of the orientation of the tool. So we need to make sure that we're always mindful of the tool orientation. And as soon as I select that, notice that it reorients the coordinate system for me. Again, Y is pointing straight up and this time X is pointing to the right and Z is the tool axis. We also have the option to do rest machining. So we can turn that on and it can evaluate what all has already been machined. But from this point, I'll leave rest machining on and it says it's from the stock setup, but we could also do previous operations and have it calculate that as well. For the heights, this is gonna be based on our selection, but notice the bottom is way down here. We don't want the bottom to be down that far. We do want the tool to extend into the open pocket, but we certainly can't have the tool go all the way through the part. We're gonna to have to do this from two sides. So we're gonna move that bottom plane. In this case, 2.2 .2 looks like it's about right. And then we're gonna move on to our passes. Now, in this case, I'm actually gonna turn on slot clearing because the geometry is a slot. And we're gonna do no stock to leave. 
we want to make sure that we're both roughing and clearing this with a finishing tool pass. And we're going to leave all the rest of the options turned on. Then we'll go into our linking parameters and we'll leave all the default parameters here. So now it's going to bring in this quarter inch end mill. And it's going to use this 3D adaptive clearing. But notice what's happening. It's working its way around and it's focusing in on the pocket like we want, but it's also taking care of these outside sections, even though we've already machined them. So what we need to do is we need to focus the attention of this toolpath in a little bit closer to make sure it's only working on this pocket. So let's go back in and edit this toolpath. And under geometry, we have this model section, which allows us to take a look at specific surfaces. So what I can do is I can come in and I can select these surfaces that I want to focus on and say OK and allow it to regenerate that toolpath and see if we can keep the toolpath inside of this area. So notice when we do that, it's still utilizing the rest of the model because it's working from the stock setup. So let's come back in. Let's modify these parameters. Instead of using these options and instead of using rest machining, we're going to focus the stock contours in on this area. And for our machining boundary, we're going to use a selection and we're going to make sure that we keep the tool inside of this boundary. So notice that we can do inside of the boundary and we can add an additional offset. We really don't need an extra offset in this case, but I'm going to add a quarter inch just so that we have a little bit wider area to work on. Sometimes when we're working with these tool paths and we're working in multi-axis, we have to just explore some of the options. In this case, we have a warning. It's telling us that it just really can't generate this toolpath, which means that one of my settings is likely off. So in the geometry section, I'm going to take the containment boundary offset down to zero because the offset is likely going to push that inward rather than keeping it outside. So if we want to make the boundary a little bit bigger, we have to use a negative value. Sometimes these options aren't explicitly clear when we start to work with them. And you just have to, again, play around with them, try a negative value instead of a positive value, and see if that'll move the operation in the right direction for you. The last thing that we want to do is we want to make sure it knows exactly where it's starting, because it's doing two contours out here in the air. In order to do that, we're going to come back into our height section. And for the top height, instead of the stock, we're going to use a selection. So it knows that it can start at this face, and then we can say OK. So now it's starting its helical entry here. It's coming down and making one deep cut, and then it's doing a second cut, and then it has a finished pass on the bottom. So everything looks pretty good from here, and even though we're in this open pocket here, it hasn't been machined yet. So keep in mind that this is perfectly fine, and it is able to go in and clear out some of that additional material. We don't necessarily need to take it down that far, but it's really not hurting anything at this point. It's adding a little bit of machine time, so it's just something that we need to evaluate. But let's select the entire setup, go into simulate, and rather than play through it, I'm going to jump all the way to the end and take a look at the result. So you can see at this point, we've taken care of the top of the part, with the exception of this internal pocket. We have machined the counter bores and the shape on the outside of our part. We still need to come back and flip this thing over and machine it from the bottom side. There are a few small pieces that should drop off just fine. If not, we can come back and clean those up first. And then we have our pocket on this side. So the last thing that we need to do for this pocket before we move on to the top is create a mirror of it. So we're going to select it, go into setup, and again, create a new pattern. We're going to come in and do a mirror. This time we're going to go across the XY plane, and then we're going to say OK. So now again, I'll select it all, I'll go to simulate, and I'll jump right to the end, and I'll just evaluate what's been machined so far. If we turn off our model, which sometimes can obscure our view, we can see exactly what's been done. So we've got these pockets on the side now, we've got the half inch holes in the counter bores, we've machined the outside, we've machined it from the top. We've done the drill on tap operations. So now we just have to come back, finish off this pocket from the top, and it would be ready to be removed from our multi-axis machine. Then we could come back and finish off the bottom by facing it and taking care of that small counter bore pocket on the other side. So this is a great time for us to go ahead and save the file before we move on to the next step.